Welcome to the Mixercist. Welcome to the Mixercist. Hey, B, what's going on, dude? Hey, man. Uh, not much. How you doing, CW? Been, I'm uh, doing great. I'm just going to go dig in because I know you're going to ask me what I watched on, so I'm going to go look at Shutter and see what I watched. Okay. But in the meantime, I know you saw some things. You were watching some I, things. I, I've seen what things. What have you been catching? Uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I had this gigantic list of, of Halloween movies to watch when we, we did that episode. So, I mean, I started with The Exorcist and The Shining and like Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. I even got to watch Reanimator, which oddly enough, we did not mention Reanimator in that episode. When you think about it, that's, that's right. right. Anyway, so this list was gigantic. I didn't get it done. After Halloween, I sort of just stumbled into Netflix because it was easier. And uh, I, so I'd watch a movie and it's like, yeah, that's, this one's not very good. And then I'd look, this, this horror movie is not, not great. <laughs> but but I did find a good TV uh, series aside from Squid Games. Apparently, by the way, there's, there's a new Korean one called Hellbound, which is supposed to be even sicker and better. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, nice. so, uh, but there's one called Midnight Mass, which uh, takes place in Cape Cod. And it's um, it's got uh, Kate Siegel in it. And it's like this island. And there's these villagers with a church and crazy stuff, uh, crazy people. And also I noticed that there is a new, a totally new season of American Horror Story that I didn't know existed yet. Mm. So mm-hmm. I watched that too. And that's pretty cool. That's split up into two stories and that's, that's really neat. I'm glad that there's, they're still doing that show, but how about you, man? Nice. I've been watching something called behind the monsters on shutter. So, you know, I like documentaries on eighties horror, right? So, so far it's been Michael Myers was episode one. Episode two was The Candyman. Episode three was Chucky. Meh. Was never a big Child's Play fan. And then episode four was Freddy Krueger. And then I also watched The Exorcist 3. Don't know why. It just popped up on Shudder. And I have to tell you that even though, like, I thought, well, George C. Scott's in it. He was Patton. Oh, yeah. Right? That can't be bad. And right? 12 Angry Men and stuff. He was, he was good. And... Uh, Jason Miller from the first, he was Damien Karras from the first Exorcist. So I thought, how bad can this be? It's bad. Like, it's shockingly bad. (laughs) It's really goddamn horrible. So anyway, uh, now I've seen that, which is fine. Um, And there's a couple I'm looking forward to. There's a new one called The Strings I'm going to check out, and I'll let you know how that goes. But uh, I haven't seen a lot of new stuff. I did get a subscription to Masterclass. So now I'm watching, like, David Mamet talking about playwriting and uh aaron sorkin talking about screenwriting and stuff like that's really fascinating to me but there's nothing in there about horror writing whatsoever like none of it applies to <laughs> horror scripts <laughs> well, why, why not i mean you have to act it i don't know movie, right i well, so when they talk about the you know this the story arc like I mean, we're going way off topic here but when they talk about what makes a great script they're talking about things like yeah it doesn't apply to horror movies Right, like all the things you're saying, this this doesn't make sense in a script. It's like it does if it's a horror movie. So there's just no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so why don't we talk? Should we talk about plugins for a bit? Because we've, I mean, we've there's so many that have come and gone. We've missed them, but yeah, I feel like the one we're thinking of talking about today is kind of novel kind of different exciting that's uh this plugin frankly is is it's it's one of the few plugins that, that i gotta say is actually truly blow me away because it's a, it's a mastering plugin but it's it's like an all-in-one quote-unquote all-in-one mastering plugin but right it's howie weinberg's freaking studio it's his entire right. ge- i mean i'm talking about his entire gear chain so yes it's got right. his uh his Sontec equalizer and SPL iron compressor. It's got his SPL, uh, you know, router with the levels on it, but it's also got his DCS converters and his MyTech converters. And there's a profile on there with tape on it. And it's just, mm-hmm. and it's so cool. Uh, I mean, I, I've been playing with it for uh, a little while and it's like, man, this thing's like, what it is is like, cause you know, you have those, uh, those all stop one and all one plug in mastering and you can tweak all the stuff and you can get it pretty good in the ballpark pretty quickly 
Uh, mm -hmm. And then you hit that limit, and it's like, okay, if I want it any better, I'm going to have to crack out all the plugins and find all my best sounding plugins yeah. and like work, start to work, do some work, like hard. Yeah. <laughs> now this yeah. one is it, this one's got everything in front of you, but it doesn't. I never felt like it was sonically compromised. It's like, oh well, if I want better, right. I'm going to have to load something. I, I don't feel like I have to load anything else, you know. Maybe, maybe something else just right. to fi finalize it, you know, like technically or whatever. But the sound is all there in this thing. Uh, I've been playing with it for uh, a bunch of days now, and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. So like, here's where, what you where get. You... So if you don't know who, it... go ahead. Yeah, no, you go ahead. Like, what do you think about it, man? Like, I so I like it. I uh, th th I have a couple of beefs with it, and they're not really sonic beefs so much as layout and usability. So let's dig in, and as I hit them, I'll show them to you. But you so know what? if I you don't know who, Howie, let's, let's let's yeah yeah that's that's the part I wanted. <laughs> well, let's talk about Howie. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll well, I mean, oh, I'm, you may know his you you may know his history a little bit better than I do. So why don't you hit it? No, you do it. I don't really know. Okay, I just, cool. I just know. I mean, just in general, he's he's like what um, Bob Ludwig was in the eighties, the seventies and eighties, where I think he's a master disc mastering engineer. And so just about every record that has gone through your hands, any important record, any big studio record, his name has been on it somewhere. So it, the one thing I'll caution you, like I'm not so big on these celebrity plugins though, like Waves does this to the max and I'm not sure I always get the value. Like if you listen to this plugin, but it was like the Jimmy Ortiz mastering chain, would you be like, this is kind of a piece of crap? <laughs> right just because it didn't have the right name on it i don't know because ultimately when they say that his name has been on thousands of grammy award winning records unless the grammy award was for mastering or for mm -hmm. excellence in engineering somehow somebody else won the grammy for best song best you know best album best act best whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. he happened to master it but that's beside the point when you send it off to a lab or a house to get it mastered by the best of the best, the ones that the big labels trust, Howie's the guy right now. So massive library. Obviously, we'd have to have a really fantastic ear and knows how to finish a record. So let's dig in through the controls. As Eric mentioned, this is your, um, if you already have uh, Scarlet, Acoustic of Scarlet, you're looking at the same equalizer architecture. It's basically the same EQ. It's the Sontech. My first beef is here. You can choose between, watch watch the frequency selector here. You can choose between low frequency, which goes from 11 to some other number, right? It's like in the five something, I think. Or you can choose mid. And so you see the frequencies now go from 100 to somewhere sub, what is that? 6K something, okay? Now, the other one, and what you're looking at over here is just the stereo... Uh, you're looking at the stereo like this is left, this is right. right okay. Right. So if I choose mid, you'll see here that I'm looking at the exact same frequency range, or I can choose high. The difficulty is that if you want it on the Sontech, you can have all three bands at the same time. If you wanted to play with, let's say, 60 to 70 or 50, maybe some subsonics or something, maybe even down to 30 or 20, and you wanted a little bit of a bump at 1 or 2K, and you wanted a shelf or do something with the top, you may not be able to pull it off. Well, that's where the shelves come in on the filter so, section, though. They do. Okay, so I'll give you a better example. Let's say you wanted to play with, you really wanted to do something narrow at 30, subsonic, sub bass, and you wanted to do a little bit of a pull down at uh, 240, there may be some mud between 240 and 400, and you wanted a little bit of a bump at 3K. You'd be out of options. Because you right. got a shelf, the shelf is a is a hundred hertz shelf. You've got a low pass filter, which is a twelve dB per uh, twelve dB per octave, and it's really nice and it's got a pretty big sweep on it. But it's not the same thing if you were looking to boost somewhere in the subs. Mm -hmm. The shelf and the filter section won't get you there. Right, that's what you mean. Right, so if you so they could have taken this like so you they think, need okay, another well, band on it, right? They do. Yeah, they, they would. So you would have to make some choices here, unless there's something I'm missing, like you can have it all somehow, but I'm not seeing how you would light all of these up at the same time. Right, right. No, so I, I mean, I think you're there's no two, way to... You're getting two shelves, high and low, and you're getting two bands in the middle. 
Yeah. So you could do exactly. four, four things at the same time. Five if you include the high pass and low pass filters. Exactly. As far as the so goes. that may not suit your needs. There are times when you may want to make a little tweak in three areas, and you just don't have that in front of you where you would have it on the Sontex slash um, the Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet yeah, right? Scarlet. That's right. Yeah. The re the reason why that's a beef for me is that there's this nice little subway map of all the different components, and so these lamps tell you on in out on off, so you can individually mute the equalizer individually mute the compressor individually mute the dax and the um the converters rather and the filters and the limiter well that's great but all this real estate here isn't being used for anything like this doesn't do anything the buttons shut them on and off and there's a full bypass which is awesome love it but this is wasted real estate and having a limiter knob the size of a human apple makes zero sense to me when you're missing one of the bands. So that's probably my big beef with this one. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Let's talk about what's good though. We do have, I think these meters are a little more accurate and I recommend if you go with acoustic as traditional gain staging at negative 18, you'll see that these, you know, play something for you here. They're not moving. But if you center, kind of center it, it's around zero dB, so it'll reflect more of the meters that are happening in your DAW. So for once we have VU meters that maybe represent a little closer what the input output's actually doing. The other thing I noticed about this tool is there's multiple places to screw up gain staging. So one, you've got an input trim on the compressor, which basically feeds the beginning of the, the compressor circuit. And then you have different controls that will allow you to feed different amounts to the limiter, to the clipper, and then out of the system itself. So this can get a little bit confusing because you've got this pre-insert uh, volume knob here. You've got something to push into the clipper a little harder. Mm -hmm. You've got something coming out of the entire plug-in here on the top right section of the of these knobs. Then you've got something to go into the limiter with. And then you've got something... Uh, what does this one do? I can't read this. as post something. Which one are we looking at? doesn't matter. At? Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. At the, bottom, the very bottom right there. Oh yeah, the post gain. Yeah, and that's gonna that, those two are gonna behave differently depending on whether or not you have control link on. So right. So now you can also control. This is the input gain to the limiter. That's so you right. might say, well, I understand why we need all these knobs because you may want to hit the compressor harder, but not hit the limiter as hard on the way out. So you may want to back it off a little bit. But it seems like there's too many places to turn dials here that if you don't like what you hear, you got to back your way out of it. Do you see what see, I'm saying? I do, but you know what? That's that's what I love about mastering chains. That's exactly the point of a mastering chain. It's just like it's a little yeah. too much distortion, but the compressor is perfect. So I don't want to have to right. do it at the beginning of the chain. I need something in the middle there. And that's what this is all about. Right. Um, right. However, if you screw yourself up, you're going to have a hard time <laughs> knowing where you put in too much volume, not enough volume. So for example, right. you could sit here and play a track like this and not get the limiter lights to light up at all. Like you'll the, the GR on the limiter's not moving, the clip buttons, which is where the, the soft clipper is really starting to work usually when the, when the light comes on. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happening for you and you're like, I'm maxed out everywhere. Like I've got my limiter gain dimed. I got my clipper input all the way up to three. And these are subtle controls. They're not yeah. giving you 20 db of of tweak here they're giving you three mm -hmm. so you're like i can't get i'm not hearing the clipper work right well it's because you didn't you, it's because you dug in on the threshold too far on the compressor you got to let up a little bit yeah or maybe or because they your attack time uh, they have defaulted that input trim you'll notice here and i don't know if this may be maybe it's not the first time that acoustic they've actually defaulted that input trim knob not at zero it starts at minus 18. So they're probably mm. assuming that somebody is going to come in with a really fucking hot file. Somebody's yeah. coming in yeah. with stuff that's almost already at zero. And they don't want the thing to sound yeah. bad. So they've done that math for you. They pulled it down to minus 18 mm -hmm. for, for someone who isn't going to want to do it or to read the manual first, right? So that yep. may be part of it. I, I mean, I did a whole, like, dem I demoed the whole thing and I had, 
I started realizing what was going on near the end because the uh, the lights weren't, uh, you know, I wasn't getting a lot of lights. And so, uh, mind you, with acoustic plugins, I have no problem with pushing them quietly because I do actually think that they, they sound really good if you're not hitting them mm-hmm. too hard. But I think that that input trim there is, is definitely a... Uh, definitely a part of it the, the fact that it starts yep. off at minus 18 so that's something to keep in mind yep so what i would do for well let's let's finish walking through the controls yeah. the, the compressor section which i assume is the spl iron compressor you can choose between different um uh different types you got germanium you've got uh, led and so on And you can, as with most compressors, you've got your input trim, as Eric was talking about. You've got your makeup gain, attack release, and then you have a mix control and your threshold. Not present here is a ratio, right? So you're you're gonna you're basically if you want more compression, you're simply gonna drive it harder by pulling the threshold down or the input trim up. Then on the, as I mentioned before, these are all bypass controls. So if you're not interested in having the compressor do a thing. You don't have to worry about zeroing out the knobs. You can just pull it out of the chain entirely. Same thing with mm-hmm. the filters. You're not using them. You take them out. On the left-hand side here, we got a number of controls for the limiter chain and for the clipper. Clipper, again, I think is part of SPL Iron. The limiter, I'm not sure what hardware they modeled. I saw an L2 there somewhere in his rack, but I don't know if that's what that means. The, the manual says it's a transparent limer, limiter. So that shouldn't be the L2, but I could be wrong. Anyway, it it can be defaulted to bypass. And then there's different converter types in the chain that you can select from, including, uh, as you mentioned, a tape profile. So each of these have different kinds of saturation and boing to them or bounce or, um, you know, that tape softness that you might be looking for. And then there's a clipper, which goes from mild to aggressive just by choosing the different modes that you might want. Interestingly is the the oversample buttons for both the limiter and the clipper. These will of course increase the load on the processor. So as you're monkeying, I recommend you, you know, keep it down to 1x and then as you go to do your final print, you can uh, jam them up. You wouldn't want to have multiple instances of this in a mix. This really is a mastering tool, so you'd be using it traditionally with a two track and this plugin possibly on its own. If that's the case, this eats up on a three-year-old Mac, this eats up half of my CPU in one instance, right? And it doesn't get a ton worse by diming or jumping this up to 8x oversampling, but it makes a bit of a ding. There's also an HQ button, which for the life of me, I've read the manual. It does say that it changes between something IIR and FIR. That's right. Now yeah. you're talking out of my range. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, right. Do you want to explain what that means for the kids? Because uh, yeah. th- that just went past me. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, that, that'll have to do with the uh, oversampling, no doubt. You can have a finite impulse response or an infinite impulse response. Uh, so it has to do with the math that goes behind the filter. So an infinite impulse response would be like a recursive loop. So we take this sample plus a certain amount of times the last sample and it just keeps going through that loop and this is how you make filters uh, finite impulse response says no 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 we're gonna take a, a certain chunk of audio and we're gonna insert taps into it and that's how we're gonna get our filter response i mean it's not the kind of thing you can explain in, in like a few minutes but it's, it's two different types of filters that you would use for the oversampling and if you look at the manual uh I believe if you're at one times, you're going to get an infinite impulse response. And if you go to four or eight times, that automatically switches you to FIR. Now, it, what the HQ switch may do is give you that FIR even if you're at one times. I'm not entirely sure that that's what it is, but that's starting to, starting to sound like that's probably what it is. Okay. I, now, if to press the button, I could not hear the difference, but when I tested that button, I was in a very loud cafe wearing Bluetooth headphones, so it's entirely possible that yep. it does amazing things. I just had, I wasn't able to test it. And then you have your limiter gain, as I mentioned before, and then you've got how much you're pushing into the clipper and how much you're pushing into the limiter. Again, the difference between this knob and this knob is not always clear. There's almost too much choice and too much instrumentation here. The last thing I'll point out is that if you want to change from compressor to equalizer and have the equalizer uh, go first, then you punch in this little button here. Same thing with the limiter and 
I want to say it's one of the converters, but I can't be yep. sure. I'm not wearing my reading glasses. And then the same thing with the converter versus the filter. Mm -hmm. So the, is that the DAC to the, the, excuse me, the DAC and then the, um, the high pass and low pass filters. So you yeah. simply decide the sequencing of all these effects by pressing or unpressing, engaging or disengaging those buttons. So there's a lot to munch on here. Let's have some fun. Let's have a listen to it. If I'm listening to, oh, by the way, sorry, to, I forgot to mention, you're going to want to link up controls if you're in left, right mode. Right. If you're in dual mono mode, you may not want to just be aware that you have to actively press this button or you can go into mid side mode. At which point you'd want to delink the controls potentially and you got your phase button and pretty much that's it. Bob's your uncle. So let's have a listen to something here and maybe, maybe let's, you know what, let's start at mid-side. Let's take a little listen to what the EQ could be doing with the middle. So here, why don't we go for the mid-range and we'll grab... Here, let's go really, really wide to start and we can narrow it and let's just give it a bump. Now for this mix, this mix is really electric guitar-y. So what tends to happen sometimes is uh, there's some buildup in the mids. Maybe instead of boosting, why don't we try pulling and see if we can't shallow it out and give it a little more bass focus, a little more top focus and see what happens. So I'm going to rewind it. And just watch me pull down the, the gain. You know, that totally changes the character of the track. All of a sudden, it's not as um, vintagey, and at the same time, it's not as nasal in the middle. It just really kind of flattens and evens the track out and makes it a little more polite. It also takes a little bit of the mm, the articulation off of the bass guitar because I'm in my mid side mode. So let's go back to let's go back to left right and let's link the controls and just try it again. Let's listen to some of the shelves maybe. Let's pull that down. Not bad. Let's see what we can do with. Uh, let's try the highs. So here, the minute you go back to high frequency selector, you lost all your edits in the mid-range, so you can't have them both. You're going to have to make some choices here. Why don't you use the shelf? I totally can. Yeah. I totally can. I always like to, I always like to hear the, you know, what's on the, the featured EQ bands. I like to hear what they're doing, but let's do exactly that. Let's go over here to the shelf, which I think they said... Ooh, do I want to say it's 10K? Or yeah. am I assuming it's 10K? Yeah, it's 10K. Is it? Because this is the roll-off. So with the shelf, high frequency. There we go. Without. You know, I think I'd almost want to go back to mid-side and catch that tambourine and give it a little bit more life, but suck out the middle. Uh, the problem is you suck out the middle of those electric guitars, I'm going to lose a bit of my snare too. So really, these are mixed problems that I should have fixed earlier in the process, but let's just A-B that using the bypass feature here, shall we? Let's take off a little bit of the... Oh yeah, sucks it right out. This is with all the changes. Without.
bring some of those mid backs, mid back, dial down the high shelf a little bit. Okay. Without. All right, let's go and investigate what this limiter can do. Let's put it in. Let's start off gentle. Now you can see even though I dime it, I'm not getting the kind of gain reduction, excuse me, the kind of gain reduction that I would want. So here's where you're going to have to start mucking about a little bit with some of these other gain controls. I noticed that too. I, like you, you keep put it, pushing it up, uh, but um, you know you're not seeing any limiting action. And then you see these little texts go by. You go, okay, it is limiting because yep. I could I could hear that yep. it was. So maybe the the, the limiter need uh, the the meter needs a little bit of something like some work or something on there. But or it could I be. assumed it was because I was running the plugin not not very hot. But but I don't know. I was getting up to levels like minus six dB lifts. <laughs> it was just sort so of we, like, we can get it moving. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's see what we can do here. There it goes. Let's crank it. Oh, oh here it goes. Right. Oh yeah. So it's creating some dirt for us. Yeah. Let's let's try some of the different modes here. Have a listen to the different converter slash tape chains. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. Let's try the tape one. Now, rather than letting the limiter do all the work, let's get that limiter in back down to something more polite. And let's hit the clippers just for fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, let's clean this right up and turn off the, the limiter entirely and hear the clippers do their thing. We'll go to the first one. Let's go without by bypassing it. Seems a little more boring, doesn't it? Let's try version two. That's a lot fatter. Nice little bit of saturation there. Let's try C3. Now, so here again, we have the clip maxed out and we can't get the clip light working. And, and I think depending on, I could be wrong about this, but in the manual, you just want to see that light start to twinkle. Anything more than that, if it's on all the time, you're probably hitting it too hard, right? So you'd have to raise your gain somewhere else in this chain here. It could be on the input trim. It could be somewhere else. But I recommend experimenting with the limiter and clipper without engaging the compressor and then bring the comp the compressor in to do the work of binding up the mix you know bringing the lows a little bit higher this is a warm mm. hug kind of compressor you don't want to try to use this to smash drums or anything like that this is really about the, f from the from a dynamics perspective really just squeezing it a little bit and making it sound more whole more finished so i'll stop there eric you must have some examples of the whole thing in action as well yeah So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and I'm going to put this on uh, the default setting, which so nothing's going on. And let's just play the tune and I'm just going to work with it like quickly, see what's going, see what we can get. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit control link because I just want to work in stereo. And I'm going to hit eight times for the limiter, eight times for the clipper and the HQ button. And that's going to give me the maximum quality. 
Let's just play the tune and then I'll just uh, start carving away at it. Let's give it some high end with the filters or with the shells. Some low. That's nice. I'm thinking maybe it needs a little bit of uh, upper man. Having a hard time reading it from where I'm sitting, but let's just add a bit. And maybe we'll take out a little bit of 350. Next up would be the uh, compression. I don't think it needs compression. This has been on analog tape. It's already compressed to fuck. Let's go to the limiter. That's some clipping. Clippers not on. Oh. So that'd be like a uh, one tune. Uh, you know, got it really loud, really fast. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, I, I didn't use the compressor or anything like that because uh, that had already been on uh, analog tape like twice, two inch, and then uh, it's, it was already really compressed. It was already as loud as it. It sounds as, really as it. sweet, mm -hmm. and it's fun. That bot that bottom end in there is a nice feature of that song. So when you brought up that low shelf, that hundred, it was too much when you first brought it in, but when you pulled it back a bit. It really uh, brought it to the fore. I mean, it's uh, it's got uh, it's got all the aspects of like those all-in-one plugins that we all love or or love mm -hmm. to hate, depending. I like them because mm -hmm. those traditionally those ones that just like, get into the ballpark really fast and say, okay, what does uh, you know what does this one do to it? What does that one do to it? All right, now let's get out, pull out the mastering chain, and let's you know try to beat that, but. Uh, in sure. this case, there's nothing else to pull out. There's enough flexibility here and enough variability that yeah. you can just, it's going to sound as good as anything if you get it, you know, if you if you work with it, get it right. I love the fact that I'm not switching yeah. between a million plugins. That's how I was able in the course of the song. Agreed. Let's uh, let's try another one here. Yep. All right, so I got another track here. This one's a little bit, got a, it's the crossing the bridge between rock and electronic. Let's uh, take a listen and I'll just work on it. Turn on the clipper. Let's turn on that um, my tech plus the tape. Let's control link. Let's oversample everything. HQ and off to the races. I'm just gonna go for the level right away here. What frequencies need later? Pressure. Without the 
compressor. I think I might like a little bit of that. Maybe not as much as I had, but... And some clipping. So I mean, it's 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 fast, right? I guess that's the, you know, the point. Uh, point. Of you know what I liked about that plug-in on that song is that song has so many little pieces in the side that I was looking for, right? I was trying to find. So there's like almost a dual bass part that you've got. You got a real synth bass, but you have this. Uh, it was like an octave pulse, kind of bouncing between two notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Since. And there were also a bunch of little effects and little things happening all over the place. I would love to hear that that compressor on, uh, you know, a slow attack, slow release, or medium medium to slow, just to give the track a squeeze a little bit. Sure, let's give to that. To hear if it if it brings some of those things up without wrecking the stereo field. That sounds like if a not plan. option two is some some so option two would be some EQ on the midside to try to find those little things. But in the first half of the song, you have a lot going on that if you're not listening for it will disappear on you. But they're really moving the stereo field around. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Let's try that. Let's uh, let's run it again here, and we'll. Uh let's go with the second slowest one. I think. Telecon's the fastest. This is the second fastest. Let's go a bit slower. Let's just set our times here. Turn off the compressor. Back on. Just back it up. 45 seconds maybe. Oh yeah, okay. It's a little bit uh, fuzzy, I guess, <laughs> but it's loud as fuck. I'm looking at my meters and it's like, I'm going to have to turn that down for YouTube. I don't even, I forgot what I have, but let's, well, uh, yeah, surprise. What's in the bag? <laughs> What's in the bag? Man? <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> Oh, what's in the box? What's in the box? I gotta watch that again. It's been a long time, man. Yeah, we do, yeah. I know. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, yes. S something kind of classical, soundtracky, score, horror. Let's do this. All right, let's add some low because we know we're going to need that. Maybe some high. Maybe don't compress at all. Let's try the converters. You know what? This is where maybe the converters might uh, might shine a little sure. bit here. Let's try the DCS, see if that makes any difference. DCS, of course, being a classic uh, older converter, so it does have a bit of a sound. Let's try my tech. I like the high end on that. Mm -hmm. Let's try the tape. I'm a little scared to compress. But let's say you had to. That would be fun to hear in 5.1 or 7.1 or something yeah. actual cinematic because there's so much good stuff going on there that you, it's, a, it's almost a bit limited by just left, right stereo. But um, I think, so the tape setting definitely rounds things off. Do you hear things get a bit softer? Yes, definitely. They get, uh, they get, okay. uh, a little, I would say, yeah, you're going to lose a little bit of detail, but what you'll gain is fatness. So a lot of the times the problem you have with digital recordings is that they're too detailed and there's not enough fatness so that's when that i think would really come into play you know mm -hmm. yeah um, so overall i can we sum it up do we think we we've seen enough yeah we've seen enough sure yeah let's sum it up there right. what, what give me your take I would on it say i would say except for that little thing with that little mm, finicky thing with the third band on the eq I could see reaching for this to try and get something done and trying to paint a picture with this plugin, right? Because it's got everything you want in one place. You don't have to sit there going, God, what plugins do I even own? Uh, let's see. Do I want a true brick wall limiter or do I want a maximizer or do I want an analog thingy or a tape feel? You just kind of have everything in one box. So it's like having all your tools in one kit. You know, I got all my toolboxes here around the house, but then I got one bag that's got the essential stuff in it, my drill, the pencils, the square, the the stuff you know you're going to use every day. And this is a bit like that. And it's classy, though. Like, these are exceptional sounding tools. I'm still a little mistrustful of Acoustica compressors. They're a little on the mm, mushy side to me. Nonetheless, you could always grab, um, if you wanted to compare, you could grab Plugin Alliance's SPL Iron, and you could grab... Acoustica's, um, excuse me, once again, Scarlet, and just start playing around and see if it's got a different vibe. But like I said, we're at the point where you don't want a compressor to smash something. You're really looking for it just to tighten things up a little bit. What I really like is the, the limiter and the clipper. That's an exciting combo. I thought that sounded really good. And with this equalizer, you can't go wrong. That's a really effective tool. 
Yeah, that's a good summary, man. I think uh, I'd, I agree pretty much with uh, everything. The Equalizer is exceptional. The uh, the Clippers it sounds different from a lot of the other Clippers that I have. There's a uh, it's a bit of give to it. It's it's really nice. I like mm-hmm. the converters, mm-hmm. uh, especially DCS and the MyTech Plus tape. MyTech on its own. I mean, I'm not sure. MyTechs are supposed to be ruler flat and clean, so. Just, yeah. I don't know, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll find the genius behind that one. But the other two, I, I, I adore, especially the tape one on something that's a little too thin. Yeah. The, the EQ is, mm-hmm. it is, this, I believe it's, if it's not the same as Scarlet, it's, it's sampled from, uh, this, the same model, like not the, the same, same unit, but yep. the same, the same model, the, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, on the compressors, I think the compressors do what what, you sh- what they should do with a with a bus signal with a with a complex mix signal. Uh, they won't go too fast. I mean, but but even you noticed that I when I had it, I had selected that silicon compressor and it was the fastest setting. Mm-hmm. You were saying, "Hey, wait a minute, mm-hmm. slow that up." So I think that 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 yeah. proves kind of the point that that how fast do you really need for mastering, right? And then, right, um, right. but my, my, I think my main main takeaway is that everything is on one interface there's no sub menus you're not bouncing back and forth between plugins you're like oh it needs some yes. compression oh it needs some eq okay turn this on bing 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 when when you get to know this and there is a quite a bit to get to know but when you get uh you know familiar with it this might be my new go-to fast thing right i won't necessarily put it through the other mastering plugin because this one i'm not gonna i might not have to redo anything because there's nothing compromised about the sounds in here it's all top class stuff yep i agree and remember when it comes to gear addiction is a beautiful thing and possession is an even better thing <laughs> so we know that this is going to be the toy for the day for at least six weeks and then they'll come out with something different or <laughs> there'd be a new one you were talking about how right now the new thing is the new eq right everyone's trying to reinvent eq right now so yeah if, if 100 people come out with a new mass all in one mastering yep. plug well we'll have something else to look at soon enough but <laughs> i like this a little better than i like things like master di- uh excuse me a bx master desk or right. any of the well the waves l style where it's just you get what you get you know the more you push into it the more funky things happen that you can't control this gives you that control back and i like that yes that's well so well said you get the control back so it's the best of both worlds, really. It's your one-stop shop, as it were. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can, you might want another meter and stuff. And also, uh, you know, something right at the very end, just to make sure there's no overs whatsoever, no DC whatsoever. You might want to use uh, mm-hmm. a spectrum analyzer or like a, a Dynamics uh, graph to show you That's the song, point. you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's, there's this mm-hmm. idea of selling plugins like, this is the only one plugin that you need for all of the mastering and i don't no i don't thing. know if anyone's achieved that no I'm, I'm thinking maybe ozone came the closest but even that that's got all these like sub menus and stuff that you have to go through and and i don't know and this thing's got vibe it's clean but it has a vibe yeah, it does it sounds mm-hmm. awesome like it it sounds good enough you're not going to have to redo it later because you didn't use something that sounded good enough. <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> yes you got it you got it right. <laughs> all right guys thank you for tuning in don't forget to send in your comments and questions and uh, let us hear your mixes and let us know what you think of the plugin and thanks for giving us a watch we appreciate you and we'll see you next time on the mixer sis <laughs>